Hello, hello. Uh, cool. So yeah, hi. Uh, my name's Ryan, and like Amir said, I'm the digital marketing manager of Quali. And um, in, in my case, manager in this case is actually the manager of the team. Um, so I head up the uh, the whole marketing department, which for us is is basically four people. So not exactly a big team, but uh, you know, I'll kind of explain a bit more about Quali, and it'll become clear why that why that team is is uh, is small. Um, so yeah, for those who don't know, uh, a little bit about Quali, just to kind of set the table. Um, the, we are basically a hyper casual game developer, so one of those guys. Um, we were founded in uh, 2011 by uh, David Darling, who's just, there he is, he can wave, but um, who was also the co-founder co of Codemasters, for those who don't know, is a huge, huge UK based um, console and PC publisher and developer. Um, so yeah, we're, like I said, independent, hyper casual, and I think that maybe one thing that makes us uh, stand out from the crowd uh, a little bit at the moment uh, is that thus far, uh, everything we've produced has been in-house. Our whole company is kind of geared towards hyper casual, uh, and therefore we've kind of reaped the rewards of that. But having said that, we're also looking now at following another industry trend. I think we're like a trend following company, it seems, um, of kind of looking to publish third party titles as well. And that's something that we're pushing into. Um, and so you might you know, recognize some of our titles. Um, and you might also be thinking like, Ryan, why the hell are you showing a graph that shows your downloads kind of decreasing? Well, the truth is that I'm a bit of a masochist. And I like to have the good things on one side, but also remind myself that things could always be better. Um, and that like, yeah, maybe, you know, uh, the ne next time these kind of growing numbers on the side will be go on for much longer than the next time we do something. Cool. Um, so yeah, you probably recognize some of our games, hopefully. Um, so yeah, obviously, I, I'm here to kind of give the, the real world example of uh, what Amir is kind of talking about in terms of automatic uh, bidding, but also some of the other kind of elements that have been talked about during the course of the day. Because um, I'm, I'm sure you guys probably, like me, can be quite skeptical sometimes when there's new things. I mean, I, I'm skeptical, but I also have an attitude of trying everything, which very much follows a kind of company policy, is that we kind of throw everything at it and we kind of say no to nothing and give things a try. Um, but to kind of give a perspe perspective of, of what we were doing before with, with IronSource specifically, and also to a degree what we're still doing um, across other p uh, partners and positions and places, um, and what will be kind of amusing, I think, for a lot of the, especially the IAP-focused guys, which is you know, probably a lot of you, um, is that uh, what we have done has been, in some ways, very simplistic. Um, almost to a degree of, I think, maybe six months ago, I was kind of embarrassed by how simple it is, uh, but came to realize that the, there's, there's kind of justification and, and, and means and reason behind the simplicity. So that means, you know, that because it's ad revenue data, that there's no ROAS per source. I mean, there is, but it's it's limited, and the way that we access it is not great. Whereas that's the whole thing of iron source improving. Um, we're also kind of bidding very simplistically. What's your CPI? What's your LTV? What's your geo? Okay, we can go for that, and we can scale. Like, yeah, it's simple, but it can be effective. But that doesn't mean there's not better ways, because there sure are. Um, and you know, basically, like I said, three or four man team. That means one and a half people doing UA, which means infrequent big updates for sure. It means n not as dynamic as someone with 40 UA managers, which sounds terrifying and delightful. Um, so, uh, so yeah, what did that mean afterwards? Once we kind of started up testing and kind of gave this a go, it meant that we had the ROAS data per source, which is certainly a dream for us. Um, it meant that we're kind of bidding on actual user quality rather than kind of taking averages and just like crossing fingers. Okay, that's exaggerating a little bit. It's a bit it's kind of like that, but then kind of making informed decisions. Um, and then basically kind of using the automatic system to kind of meet our ROAS targets and goals. Um, so what did that look like? And I like this graph. So um, basically this shows well, quite clearly, I guess. So the red line being our targets, the ROAS goals that we were setting, and uh, the automatic system kind of bidding and, and, and moving our target and kind of moving the bids appropriately, and the actual ROAS coming in appropriate to the goals. So you can kind of see with the red line, we actually kind of played around with things a little bit. You know, uh, it was a fairly new system and way of thinking for us in a way. Um, and so we kind of played around to see where we could hit the sweet spot. And you know, you kind of noticed something that we were definitely happy and kind of relieved by was how the system uh, met 
uh, changing targets very, very, very quickly and rapidly, and that helps a hell of a lot for us because as the, you know decisions we're making are like very, very quick. You know, day to day is everything that matters, um, and can things can happen and change very, very quickly. Um, so yeah, basically, you know, I, something else that's not really on here, but I wanted to add is is that you know we were. In, in a lot of cases experiencing, once we kind of got our goals set, was we were experiencing kind of very similar CPIs in, in this specific test um, with much, much better RAS results and like very similar scale um, kind of leveling. Uh, so, you know, that's a uh, UAE manager's dream, right? Uh, can't complain. Um, this is my least favorite slide because it basically shows how my ability suffers compared to like the automated system, which is great. Um, but, you know, can't complain at that. So we, you know, in the interest of us testing, like I said, we, that's everything that we run. We, everything we do has to be tested um, properly. And in this case, we kind of run campaigns side by side. Um, and basically, you, you know, well, that's pretty self-explanatory. The optimizing system is performing better on the whole. Um, and kind of pushing above where we were, and you know, just for reference, this line was quite consistent this way as well. So not just cheating and cutting it off. Um, cool. So some other kind of slightly interesting things happened here. Um, I, I guess this one's not a big shock, but at the same time, it's just interesting to see in graph form. Uh, so the line along the bottom being that that default area being the default bid. So what we were kind of bidding when we were doing things automatically, very one-dimensional, I guess, but uh, effective. Um, whereas then we're changing and using the automizer and you know you get this much, much, very, very different range and array of, of bits. Not surprising, but good to see. Uh, and then what that kind of ends up with and something that we wanted to see and had to look at hard um, was basically you know having higher quality sources and the, the higher quality sources driving a lot of traffic, but also, you know, like things being lower than our bid, and us basically paying less for those, despite having very similar, like I said, very similar scale. So we're saving money on one, but also making more money from certain sources on the other, uh, and that's a nice combination for sure. Uh, so, uh, yeah, my, my bit's been nice and quick, don't worry. Uh, in terms of kind of summarizing that very, very quick kind of example is that one thing uh, that's been not easy for us and and has forced us to adapt and change and learn is the challenge in defining uh, ROAS targets for, for a hyper-casual game. Um, like I said, things adapt very quickly and also we rely so much on K-factor, on organics and the different K-factor that different games can bring. So it's definitely not like a simple system, but it's something now that we're able to actually get the lowdown on and kind of work with and improve. Um, but yeah, in terms of the actual tests itself, and I, I, I keep saying test, but the truth is now we're, we're basi this is basically our de facto, this is everything that we're going to be start using, um, at least where we can, I guess, iron source. Uh, basically, you know, we're now bidding on real user quality, which was not easy before, um, and there were definitely no great solutions before. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's increasing scale and matters. And I think that the the kind of no manual work is, can almost be underappreciated because for us it's hugely appreciated because we I just don't have the time to handle the thousands and thousands of campaigns that we're running across hundreds of geos um, with several different games at once all in the top of the charts and stuff you know you can probably picture that being a bit of a nightmare um, and so yeah the, the final gist I guess is really that this is something that has been highly effective for us and is also just not only the direction of what we want to do with iSource, but the, the movement and the direction we want to go as a company and kind of uh, building out our own systems to also work in a similar way. And well, hopefully we can just use iSource, I guess, too. I'm sure you guys would like that. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it from me. Yes. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Who is it? Oh, questions. Yes, that's a good idea. I forget about that. Any questions? Hello, should I give you the mic? <laughs> so uh, if we want to use uh, optimization, so you've got to uh, give bank your data to answer network, right? Uh, as recently, many uh, answer network will do publishing. So do you have some concerns that your data will be used by some other people or whatever? So if I'm understanding correctly, are you basically worried about the possibilities of something like Iron Source and using their data to create their own kind of publishing 
is, I mean, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, this is a very broad question, right? Okay, interesting. Um, so I guess there is a classic uh, problem here, which is that mm, our morals, at, at least for the companies that are demonstrating that in practice, I think it's a bit dangerous to assume that a company is going to uh, do, do an out loving, basically. Uh, but um, so I don't know. I don't necessarily want to assume that for now because, to be honest, to assume that would be the, the death of us if we were to be scared of every kind of network and channel that we were using. That, that would be dangerous. Um, but in terms of, I guess you probably want to know kind of what I think about Lion Studios and out loving things is that um, uh, it feels like a dirty word. Uh, <laughs> but uh, basically, you know. Sometimes, and I think in the industry is that the morals can be there that you can see that like oh, this is something that in the future could be kind of dangerous. But especially in hyper casual land, it can be really difficult to think like so f like too far ahead um, because the day to day is that you got to sometimes think of your wallet. I think my wallet's in that one. But yeah, um, so yeah, does that kind of <laughs> give you an idea of what we're thinking? <laughs> Just uh, the, the the data that is being used to calculate the ROAS is the data that we collect as the mediation. So there is not really a movement of data from the publisher to us, unless we're talking about IAP, and then if you're using post-install events, this is something that you use to optimize your user acquisition strategy. But everything that's related to ad monetization, it's data that we have that we just use to, uh, for better UA. Yeah. Anything <laughs> uh, else? Thank you, Ryan. No worries. Thank you. Cool, guys. One session left. Trust me. Trust me. Take 10 minutes to drink a coffee. 10 minutes, not more than that. And we will finish before 6. So 10 minutes break, and we continue with the last session.